Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and how are we doing tonight? Woo! Now, before we get started with the 39 steps, we have a few jokes to wet your palate. Hey, Nick! What's that, JD? <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Phones. Phones who? Not your phone. Not in the theater, it better not be. If you have a phone, turn it off. Turn it on silent. Get it out of here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, JD. Yeah, Nick? Knock, knock. Who's there? Strobe lights. <laughs> Strobe lights who? Strobe lights in this show. <laughs> uh, if you have epilepsy, that's not good for you. <laughs> hey, Nick. Hey, JD. Who's there? Knock, knock. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> who's there? <laughs> toy guns. Toy guns who? We use toy guns in this show. They're toy guns, but they're guns. But they're toys, but they're guns. <laughs> hey, JD. Knock, knock. Who's there? Flash photography. Flash photography who? Uh, flash photography is annoying. Don't do it to us, please. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Nick. What's that, JD? Knock, knock. <laughs> Who's there? 15 minute intermission. 15 minute intermission? <laughs> There's 15 minute intermission. <laughs> Good to know. Uh, anything else? Two more hours of this. <laughs> Buckle up, everybody. <laughs> in the old country and frankly wondering why. The weather made me liverish, no exercise to speak of, and the talk of the ordinary Englishman frankly made me sick. <laughs> I had enough of parties and restaurants and race meetings. No pal to go about with, which probably explains things. Oppie Binge lost in the Canadian treasury. Tommy Delarain married off to a blonde heiress in Chicago. Chips Crothers eaten by crocodiles in Limpopo. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving me Richard Henney, 37 years old, sound in wind and limb, back home. Which is no home at all, if you want to know. Just a dull, little, rented flat in West One. Portland place, actually. And I was bored. No more than bored, tired. Tired of the world and tired of life, to be honest. So I called my broker. He wasn't in. Dropped into my club, full of old colonial buffers. Had a scotch and soda. Picked up the paper. Put it back. Full of wars and elections and rumors of wars. And I thought, who the bloody hell cares, frankly? What does it all matter? What happens to anyone? What happens to me? No one would miss me. I wouldn't miss me. I could quite easily just... <sighs> and I thought, come on, Hannah, put this stuff together, man. Find something to do. Do, you bloody fool, something mindless and trivial, something utterly pointless, something... I know, a visit to the theater. Facts and remembers every one of them. Facts from history 
and from geography, facts from newspapers and scientific books. In fact, more facts is in his brain than is possible to conceive. <laughs> I will also mention that before retiring, Mr. Memory has kindly consented to leaving his entire brain to the British Museum for scientific purposes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will now prepare myself for this evening's performance and clear my inner being of all eccentric and supernumerary material. Now then, are you ready for your questions, Mr. Memory? Quite ready. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now then, first question, please. Come on now, please. What was that, sir? Who won the cup in 1926? Who won the cup in 1926, Mr. Memory? Who won the cup in 1926? <laughs> The Tottenham Hotspurs won the cup in 1926, defeating the Arsenal Gunners by a score of 5 to nil in the presence of His Majesty King George V. <laughs> Am I right, sir? Quite right, Mr. Memory. <laughs> <laughs> Next question, please. What's Napoleon's horse called? What was Napoleon's horse called, Mr. Memory? What was Napoleon's horse called? <laughs> 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 Napoleon Edwards was called Bellerophon, which he rode for the final time at Waterloo, June 15th, 1815. Am I right, sir? Quite right, Mr. <laughs> Memory. <laughs> Thank you. How old's my West? How old's my West, Mr. Memory? Well, I know, sir. But I never tell a lady's age. <laughs> oh, really good, Mr. Memory. Thank you. Now then, a serious question, please. I say, who was that? Yes, sir. How far is Winnipeg from Montreal? Ah, a gentleman from Canada. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. <laughs> How far is Winnipeg from Montreal, Mr. Memory? Winnipeg from Montreal. Hmm. Winnipeg from Montreal. <laughs> One thousand four hundred and fifty-six miles. Am I right, sir? Quite right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Are you all right? Yes, sir. Next question, please. Say! Do you know that? <laughs> Calm down, please. <laughs> Telephone. Do you have to 
Why not? Because I think this for me. I said don't answer! <laughs> <laughs> I prefer the word agent better. Secret agent, I suppose? For which country? I have no country. <laughs> Born in a balloon, eh? Mr. <laughs> Hannon, please! I'm being pursued by a very brilliant secret agent of a certain foreign power who's on the verge of obtaining highly confidential information vital to the safety of your air defense. Tracked two of his men to that music hall. Unfortunately, they recognized me. Ever heard of a thing called persecution mania? Yeah. You don't believe me. Frankly, I don't. They're in the streets at this moment underneath your English lamppost. Take a look, why don't you? But be careful.
Annabella? Oh, Richard, Richard. Now look here, Annabella, you just <laughs> come into my life from nowhere and, and get me all, you know, involved. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I've never met anyone quite like you. And frankly, to be quite frank, I... <gasps>
illustrious brown eyes, <laughs> pencil mustache. <laughs> Excuse me, might I have a look at your paper? Oh, certainly.
The suspect Richard Hanna managed to jump from the fourth bridge. Jet managed to jump from a train onto the fourth bridge just outside Edinburgh. Police pursued him onto the bridge, but he gave them the slip, hanging from girders with his bare hands. The suspect is approximately 37 and about six foot one. Although he is clearly dangerous, <laughs> quite attractive looking actually, dark wavy hair, illustrious brown eyes, and a very attractive pencil mustache. It is not known, <laughs> it is not known whether he survived his or The police had to call off the search in the gathering darkness. Hello <laughs> there. Can I help you? Yes, I'm I'm looking for work. What kind of work? I'm I'm an itinerant labourer. You'll find nothing in this vicinity. Oh there are no big houses around here. No big houses. <laughs> What's about that big house? What big house? That big house. Oh, that big house. <laughs> is that not a big house? It is a big house. <laughs> so who's <laughs> Professor, I believe. Professor Dorley. An English man. It would happen to be called Alp Nashalah, would it? It would. Right, I'll tie them there, cheerio. You won't tonight! Won't I? It's nearly 14 miles, the other side of the lock. Yeah, Margaret! Hi. We have a visitor. Good evening, sir. Good evening. You could stay here if you wanted. <laughs> well, second thoughts, that'd be very, very kind, thank you. Can you eat the herring? I can murder half a dozen. Could you sleep in a box, baby? I can try. Two and six. Stop. Say to the gentleman and be quick about it. Your daughter? That's my wife. Well done. <laughs> I'll make my pair the herring. Eh? I'll say to the coos. Sorry? I'll say to the coos. Right. <laughs> Where do you come in? I'd love to. Beautiful. They wouldn't if you were beside them. <laughs> you wouldn't say that. <laughs> 
What not to say? What? I was just telling your wife I prefer living in the downs to the country. God made the country. Certainly did. Jump already, woman. Then hurry yourself. I might have a look at your paper. I suit yourself. <laughs> you did never tell me your name. Oh, um, I'm Hammond. Mr. O. Um, Hammond. <laughs> so, Hammond. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs>
have any news? She's been murdered! <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> yes, of course. The Portland Mansion's affair, quite dreadful. And now the police are after you. They are, rather. Well, don't you worry about them. I managed to put them off the scent. <laughs> They'll be far away by now. Then softly. Not at all, old chap. I didn't do it! Of course I... you didn't do it, Mr. Mr. Hannay. I suppose it's safe to call you by your real name now. Quite safe. Surely could. But tell me, why did you come all the way to Scotland to tell me about it? Because I believe she was trying to tell you something. Uh, some top secret air ministry <coughs> secret. <laughs> and she was killed by a foreign agent she was interested too. Really? Well, I'm so glad you told me. And risking your life into the bargain. How can I ever thank you? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, Professor, she was looking for something. Yes? Something called Go on. the 39 steps. If we can figure out what the 39 steps are, then we can. So! <laughs> Let me... <laughs> <laughs> Let me get this white here. Oh, I'm so sorry. You must be exhausted. Do take a seat, Mr. Hatton. Ruthless! <laughs> 
<laughs> when the war comes, these will be the exact qualities we will need. War? Oh, yes, we'll have quite a show of it. And what if I don't believe in those qualities? What other qualities are there? Well, human qualities. Human qualities? What human qualities? Loyalty, selflessness, sacrifice. Love. Ha! Love! <laughs> oh, please, Mr. Hannay, when have you ever loved anyone? It's not in your nature, old sport. Never has been, has it? You have no heart, do you, Hannay? But you know this. So sad, isn't it? No one to love. No one to care for. No home to go to. But there is, you see. There is our home. <laughs> our home. That is the only place you will find love, old chap. The only place you really, truly belong. Oh, we will give you love, And <laughs> in return, you shall love us. <laughs> the masterpiece <laughs> on our great unstoppable march, commanded eternally by death. Steps. 
This is serious, you know. If it wasn't, you don't suppose I put myself in your hands with that murder charge hanging over ah! me? Never heed the murder, Mr. Henney. I don't doubt you'll be able to convince, uh, to convince Scotland Yard of your innocence as easily as you've convinced me. All I need is a short statement to forward to the proper authority. I have someone coming down from the police station next door to take it down. Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs>
pleasure to call upon our ever popular chairman, Mr. McQuarrie, to say a few choice words about this evening's illustrious <laughs> special guests. Mr. McQuarrie, if you would please. Mr. McQuarrie. <laughs> 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 Traveling on the Highland Express over that magnificent structure, the fourth bridge. I, <laughs> I had no idea that in a few days I'd be addressing an important political meeting. But, but may I say from the bottom of my heart and the utmost sincerity how delighted and relieved I am to be in your presence at the moment. Oh, hello. Do take a seat. We're just getting to the best. Good heavens. Hello. Hello. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, uh, what was I saying? Ah, oh, yes, delighted, and not to say relieved, because so long as I stand on this platform, I am delivered from the moment from the cares and anxieties that are always the lot of a man in my position. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we're here tonight to, to, uh, discuss, uh, what shall we discuss? <laughs> I, I, I know. How about the herring trade, or, or Haddock, perhaps, or, or the idle rich? Not that I can talk about that because I'm not rich and I've never been idle. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, uh, well, I've been pretty busy all my life, really. Yeah. Well, actually, not that recently. Recently, the last few days, well, last day really, I, I, I've been in a bit of a slump, to be honest. <laughs> Catching myself in the lonely hours full of damned thoughts <laughs> and what have you. Well, actually, not that recently. Recently, recently, the, the last day, I, everything's got a bit haywire, frankly. Wouldn't say it's been easy. Pretty damn difficult, actually. But the odd thing is, 
The odd thing is that you carry on. And it's pretty bracing when you do. Uh, pulls a tap out of himself, if you know what I mean. Uh, there he is, no idea what's happening, where to turn, who to trust, whether it be worth it at the end of it all, but something I don't know, uh, stirs the old bones, uh, gets the old tick of pumping again. Uh, and there's no time to think. Uh, and your mind's racing, uh, and your heart's singing, and, and you're meeting people, real people, doing the best they can. Yes, doing the best they can in all the terrible situations that the world throws at them, suffering things that no man or woman ought to suffer. And yet they carry on. Oh. They don't give up. They damn well keep going. <laughs> and I'll tell you what else they do. They look out for each other too. Whatever problem they've got, they damn well look after each other. Is that such an outmoded sentimental notion? Is it? Well, is it? So look here. Let's set ourselves resolutely to make this world a happier place. A, a better world, a, a nice world, a, a world where no nation plots against nation, where no neighbor plots against neighbor, where there's no persecution or hunting down, where everybody gets a square deal and a sporting chance, and where people try to help them not to end up. A, a world of suspicion and cruelty and fear have been forever banished. So I'm asking you, I'm asking each and every one of you here tonight, uh, you, uh, and you, uh, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and definitely you. Is that the sort of world you want? Because that's the sort of world I want. What do you think? Come on, let's vote on it. A vote for a better world, a good world, a nice world, and above all, vote for Mr. Big Crocodile. <laughs> Ha <laughs> 
Just that tune. Right under the style. Ow, ow. Oh. <laughs> we seem to be a little stuck. Is that so? Uh, hang on. Oh, uh, what? If you go, and, and then if I go. I say we can do some of this. Oh. 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 And please stop coming. Those policemen are going to get you as soon as it's light, you know. As soon as daybreak dawns. They're not policemen. Oh, really? So when did my man out? Why didn't you find that out yourself? I, I've never known there's a wrong road to Inverie. They were taking us to their boss with their little finger missing. God help either of us if you had to meet them. Oh, so I see you're still sticking to your penny over that spy story. All right. I am going to say this one more time. There's a dangerous conspiracy against this island, and we are the only ones who can stop it. The gallant knight to the rescue. All right, then. You're on a desolate moor, in the dark, manacled to a plain common murderer who stabbed an innocent, defenseless woman just four days ago and can't wait to get you off his hands. That's the situation you prefer than have it, my girl, and welcome. Oh! Oh! I'm not afraid of you. Bless you. Thank you. Pleasure. Ha, ha, ha. 
Yes, indeed, madam. Certainly, madam. Goodbye, madam. Thank you, madam. <laughs> <laughs> well, spill the beans. The professor's got the wind up. He's cleared out already. Cleared out already? He thinks it's too dangerous what with Anna and the girl on the loose. He's wanting the whole 39 steps. The whole 39 steps? Does he have the... You know. Well, thank God for that. Yes, and he's picking up our friend from the London Palladium tonight on the way out. On the way out. Right. Right. I'll start the car. You check the register. Right. Leave 
well alone. I am accused of murder! <laughs> the only way to clear my name is to expose those spies! So there you go again, you see. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it! I'm a horrible, beastly, and savage! But, but much more important than that, much more important than clearing my name, they're about to leave the country with a secret vital to the safety of our empathy! I'm very, very sorry! Which show about today or evening? I don't know! <laughs> Well, thanks for your help. Goodbye. 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 And don't expect me to come with you. I won't let it go. You're not surprised. You're an old man. Sir, there's a good chance, sir. 
All right, all right, all right. It's innocent, I tell you. <laughs> Sorry, Pablo. There's no other way. Very good, sir. Now, if you just... <laughs> He's escaped! <laughs> Quick! Block all the exits! Block all the exits! Get on this door, sir! Turn 
line, Jack, is offset by a groove beaten on the HP enters, Jack, with excess pressure being taken up on adjustable first block, dividing 900 over 3 half energy to the engine. This is seen in an elevating two line of cylinders of three accessible elevators, and this renders the device completely silent. <gasps> Am I right, sir? <laughs> Quite right, old chap. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad it's off my mind at last, sir. Sad story of my life. <laughs> Richard Hannay. Poor little off boy who never had a chance. Irredeemable, irreclaimable. Utterly horrid and beastly. <laughs> this is the man I want, Inspector. <laughs> <laughs> 